Hello, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, guys, how are you? Good, thank you. Well, good. My first question might be a little bit uh, stupid. I hope it's not. Well, we'll, we'll be the judge of that. Shoot, Paul, and shoot. And Roberto Forci and Alex Kurtzman and their background. I have to know, did any of them show you the Greg Brady, Johnny Bravo episode and say, put a little bit of that into Tony Bravo? <laughs> oh, man. You know what? Bob did bring that up, actually. Bob did bring that up to me. I don't know if you wanted me to necessarily incorporate it into the... Uh, into, uh, but I, I do know that the namesake is kind of a, uh, I think it's actually, it's part someone who's in Bob's life, one of his family members, uh, a young uh, uncle that they looked up to that, that uh, passed many years ago. And, and then I think Greg Brady is Johnny Bravo is a combination of the two. So you're actually close to home in terms of the namesake. <laughs> Well, I just I know those guys and their pop culture references, and and they I know Robert Rodriguez has actually talked about the Brady Bunch before and how much he watched it as a kid, so I had to figure some of it to be in there a little bit. Well, it's funny, you know, you 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 piece two and two together, man. You've cracked the code. <laughs> I was gonna say during the World Cup again. I don't want to sound stupid, but I saw these promos that weren't necessarily for the show but had characters from the show in character as the soccer players. And watching it, I bought that these were real soccer players, and it makes me wonder just how intense the soccer training camps are for this show to make it look like we're watching a real team because when I watch the episode, that's what I feel like. Well, that's great. No, I'm glad you feel that way, Paul. No, uh, the... Uh, um you know, there was a there was a very intense there was an intensive before we started shooting for about two and a half weeks, um, and then and then from that point on, you know, we started working and we we're shooting all day. And then, uh, but a lot of the guys, you know, a lot of the other, uh, um, well, of course, the other accredited cast members who, you know, Peter Gaddio and Tank Sade and 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 Franz Latin and the guys who play the actors who were also, you know, footballers. Um, you know, they went through, they continued their training and they were able to, to come in two, three times a week. And of course, I, I, I found time to train on my own. And, uh, and But we have the help of uh, a bunch of ex-professionals and people who played for the MLS and, and, and uh, Coach Jack and Coach Amy and all these great people who, who work at Game Changing Films. So um, I'm, I'm glad it reads as realistic because we, we only get better throughout the season. And I look forward to everyone seeing the progress that we make. But um but yeah. Hey, well, for you, Alfred, I mean, did they talk to you about your role too and how you sort of fit in there with what their past experiences had been? Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's lots of, you know, all, all creative work has to, can't help but include certain references to things that one's absorbed over the years, you know, sort of other stories, other movies, other TV shows. And that's part of the creative process. Everything you experience, everything you take in, goes you know becomes distilled and 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 comes out through this prism of of what of the stuff that you know and love and that's wonderful that's what's so wonderful about Robert Rodriguez is that he's actually not just allowed his own sensibilities and his own taste to kind of uh, uh, affect what we're doing but also he's he's done it by starting up his own network which is you know pretty amazing you know he wants to you know he it's it's as if he's saying this is the sort of thing I love this is what I really enjoy here it is. I hope you enjoy it as well. And and that's a incredibly generous and creative move to make. And in terms of what I've get, what I'm getting uh, from 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 the writers and the creators, as far as my character's concerned, obviously there's all kinds of little allusions to to past, you know, villains and 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 scenarios, and and that's all for the good. I mean, there's a kind of great. There's a great tradition, for instance, of British actors playing villains in American movies and TV, and uh, and even and that I'm just I'm very proud to be part of that tradition, and uh, but to 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 give uh, to give me a character who can be so relentlessly cold and 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 evil and sinister, and at the same time give him a certain amount of charm and sophistication and elegance is uh, it's it's a great thing to be able to play. You know, it's it's. Uh, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of fun to um, you know to kill someone with a smile on your face, <laughs> dramatically <laughs> speaking. I hasten to add. Well, as you can see, you bring up Robert Rodriguez starting his own network show and you our network channel, and you guys are, have already been renewed for a second season. 
and it seems kind of like a double-edged sword to me where there's a little bit less pressure that you're going to get renewed because it is his show and he has such a hand in it, yet it's also the, only the second show, original program, premiering on this channel, so that makes it like seem like there's more pressure because you're trying to bring people to the channel. Right. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, that, that 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 could be true. But also, I think there's also another side to it, which is that, you know, the show wouldn't have been renewed unless the network as a whole, not just Robert, but everyone involved in the network, if they didn't have faith in the show, then uh, because ultimately, you know, everyone's in show business. You know, it's not just a purely altruistic endeavor. I mean, you know, the, 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 they have a lot of faith in the show and a lot of belief in the future of the show. And I think that's, uh, you know, and that was a very palpable tangible way to express that by you know giving us the chance to to go straight into a second season and because there's there's a lot of creative energy involved here you know the writers producers uh, directors actors we're all very very happy to be here and very keen mm -hmm. to to make you know allow this show to kind of make its mark and I think that uh, you know uh, every uh, all the all the producers and we're, we're so happy uh, with 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 the end product and it, it's come to the point where but going in you know it's bob orsi's imagination it's robert's sensibility and his it, you know it's just all we had to do is not mess it up <laughs> so uh, and uh and and it's uh, it's exciting they, do, they they and and but it's because it's a new network because we need content they're so thrilled that the show actually came out to be this really high quality thing and and all that does is just further spur them on to 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 more creative endeavors and 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 and, and building more content and they know that they have dusk and they have us as these staples that can go on continue and because they we they believe in us and because we know that they're not just like an, uh, other networks will just drop the show before it really gains its feet and gets its traction uh, Robert always says, you know, Breaking Bad never got numbers in the first season. It was only when it was on Netflix in season three that people began to really gra grab hold of it. Mm -hmm. And because we have Robert and we have Bob and and Heather and, and Jay and Dan, all these guys uh, who believe in the show, and they're not just going to, you know, turn tail and run when, uh, you know, if, if they don't see immediate n numbers. But reviews have been great. People, everyone loves, internally loves the product. And uh, we have this great freedom of, of, of and freedom of mind, and we're and it's not that there's a, a, a release on the valve of the pressure. In fact, all, all it really, all we want to do now is just can is just make it better because we know that the creators we're dealing with uh, are, are giving to us as much as we're giving to them. So, uh, what? so yeah, it's great. Well, you can say what I love about the show is that it is a little bit old-fashioned in the sense that it doesn't necessarily depend on you having seen the episode beforehand to understand what's going on in each individual episode, even though there's that story arc going through the entire thing, which it seems like some shows are starting to go back to that after we've seen such episodic television series. Right. No, and that, and that has a lot to do with Robert and... Uh, the great freedom he gives every guest director. Every, everybody who comes into the show is given the freedom to make their own 43-minute movie. That's the way Bob puts it, the way Robert puts it. And they're given absolute blank check, carte blanche, to just make their own thing. And so it gives it uh, the same essence of, uh, you know, Robert loves Frank. And we just, just went to the Sin City 2 premiere, and he loves Frank and the graphic novel and what that is. And, and, and as you, of course, Frank does all his own stuff, but... In, in, in normal comic books, you get new writers, you get new artists for each book, and that's what our show feels like. So you can come in in any episode and get a different tone, uh, a, you know, a, a standalone story, and, uh, and, and that, that is, that is a, uh, one of the great appeals of our show, and that's something that actually I'm very personally very proud of is that everyone, all the directors are coming are so happy just because they're just, they, they can, we have all these beautiful feature shots in this television show just because they can get creative and can do whatever they want. There's no formula. And uh, we're really happy about that. I am personally. Well, and last question, going back to sort of the old-fashioned feel, when are we going to see a crossover with Matador and Dust Till Dawn? Uh, sorry, a crossover with what? Matador and? Oh, Dusk. From Dust Till Dawn. Oh, oh Dust Till Dawn. going to be a crossover episode like back in the old days where some of the characters intertwine. Because I could see that happening. In I know. Well, if, if you've watched the pilot, it already kind of did. Uh, in a very small way, you know, Zane and DJ and, and Wilmer, and they all kind of make a really quick cameo appearance in, in the and Andres's party, Fred's party. 
Um, but that's, uh, yeah, we had to talk about that. And we were also thinking of Machete. You know, I think Machete should come and join the Matador on, a, on, a, <laughs> on an excursion. He knows what I'm talking that, about. He, no, <laughs> th that would be awesome. I would definitely get to see that. All three of them combined. How about now, that? I missed that cameo in the first episode. I watched the pilot, and I didn't catch that. Oh, cool. Yeah, you go back, there's a party, and then... Uh, and and yeah, Wilmer and Zane and DJ are all around this like high bar talking and chatting and laughing and I kind of give them a double take like, is that the guy from the '70s show at Andres Galan's party? And uh, oh, I, it's yeah, I, just a little nugget, a little nugget of information buried there. Well, I have to go back and watch it. Well, thanks guys. Thanks, it's brother. Thanks. Talking. El Rey Network Tuesday at 9 p.m. Yes, definitely. We'll get the word out. I'll see you later. Thank thanks, you. you.